Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? Clear path in the building, and man, we got a special guest. We got the big homie, man. Oh, yeah, yeah Landon, Landon's special guest. <laughs> I'm the special uh, guest? Landon's special guest. <laughs> nah, but for real though, man, we got a special guest. This is one of, the, one of my favorite guys to talk to. I think every day, me and this dude can debate about something. And <laughs> of course, you guys know him, man, the great sets of balls. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Let's talk. Let's get it in. Okay, so we- Finally. Have, <laughs> yeah. Because we always talk about all kind of stuff, whether it has to do with Crayolas to man, jump shoes. shooters yeah. to shoes to everything in, in, in between, but we never really put it on paper or or print or, or film or. Well, we gonna have it now. He probably right. gonna make a lot of people mad here. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, because he makes me mad, so I know this is gonna happen. So, let's just start this off real quick because we had an interesting topic beforehand, and we were talking about our decade team. Yeah. Obviously, we're about a week away from a new year. We're into 2020, so now we're gonna be thinking about this all decade team. Yeah. And we're gonna start from 2010 to 20, obviously 2019 right now. And of course, I think we all have a unanimous on that list, which will be LeBron James. LeBron James mm -hmm. unanimous. Okay. KD. Kevin Durant unanimous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steph Curry. Steph Curry is unanimous. Unanimous. Now that leaves another guard spot and another front court spot. Right. So this is where I got interested at. Now, me personally, I'm looking at what has been done recently. Obviously, that may be a little wrong, but I think James Harden should be on that all decade team because he has an MVP during this this you know decade and I mean the dude's about to do something that we haven't seen in years since Michael Jordan. Right. He's about to average thirty eight points per game. And right. And and we also let's rewind a little bit. We also, you know, just the debatable about this is do we go position for position or do okay. we just go the the player you know, it doesn't matter if he's a midget or he's a seven-footer. He just happened to make this top five list. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard thing about it because right. you got Kobe Bryant, you got Tim Duncan, you got Dirk Nowitzki all in this, but they're, you know, on, we're on their way out. Uh, you know, I said in that five position, uh, I, I would go with Chris Bosh because of the rings. And, you know, in that center position, who else was chasing championships? You, you went with Dwight Howard, Dwight Howard because of – the, the, the defensive promise yeah, and, and all his awards. And I think Anthony Davis, who you kind of spoke yeah. on. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Kwan Anthony Towns doesn't have the, the longevity part on that because he's a kind of a newer, to, late 2010 yeah. guy. But, I mean, Anthony Davis comes to mind. So, Landon, um, for you, um, obviously, I think said also mentioned Russell Westbrook as the other guard with Steph. But who do you have in mind? Because I know you had a certain guy that you said well, should have been unanimous at the guard spot. Kobe. Kobe. Well, why Kobe? Well, he did. Well, I mean, he still went to six All Star games. I mean, right. appearances. I mean, he, yes, you could figure that Mavericks, you know, ended his contention in 2011, but we didn't know that at the time. So, I and mean, I also debate the, the the popularity starting position to the All Star game. Yes, he would have made the All Star team, but he made the All Star team when he was with me, and and. It was it, he didn't deserve to be on the All Star team, but the fans voted him mm -hmm. to be a starter. So with Kobe, it's kind of tough because mm -hmm. he's a fan favorite from from jump from mm -hmm. his career to his career, and uh, and and what he would have made six All Stars if he wasn't who because he, he was hurt. He was hurt half the time. Or you know? Laker. Yeah. 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 See, to me, it just it makes it interesting because then you get guys like Kyrie Irving, who we won't mention. Yeah. Um, obviously, he has a lot of injuries, but he's had a phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, career so far. I mean, there's guys like Clay Thompson, right. who has all the cachet, right? And uh, I was thinking about Kevin Love too before the. Yeah. You know, it was, it's, it's 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 tough, yeah. and then and then you we talk positioning, and you're saying James Harden and Steph Curry make that list on your list, yeah. but who plays the point? I think. I mean, my thing is this: that's because they saying. both play point on their mm -hmm. existing yeah, teams. Yeah, Steph can play without the ball. That's something that I think that was established. Obviously, being Golden State, he's better off the ball than. Dominating the ball, um, they just. My thing is with James Harden is this. I get it. There's a lot of you can break down his game and say, well, he does this a lot. A lot of people don't like the like the flopping, but when you're talking about offensive skill, I can't think of a guy at his position in years who we've been like. And, and you're saying, if James Harden can't play without the basketball, mm -hmm. and you put him on a team with Steph Curry, LeBron James, and KD. Mm -hmm. How is he gonna make this squad? How is he gonna get any touches? Well, well the thing because is, he, he he's he's not the first, second, or third option. ISO option. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna say this because both James Harden and LeBron both average double digit assists. Right, and but I'm saying, it. but they're but that but that's saying that's at the same time. Let's who's bringing the ball up? 
You got Steph, you got you got uh, James Harden bring the ball, supposedly your point guards. Now LeBron is a triple-double machine at the point position. And even his days in Cleveland and, and, and uh, Miami, he was bringing the ball up, initiating, uh, initiating the offense. Kevin Durant as well. So it's, and on this list that you have, James Harden is the third ISO op- option. Just like oh. on the Olympic team. Just like on the Olympic oh, yeah. team. So you guys are just trying to build the perfect team instead of saying, hey. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my, that's my thing. I want to try to build a perfect team. You want to go off just dangerous players like these yeah, the players are just dangerous. Because I think when they did the team in the 90s, because it could have been a case that you could have said Charles on car, but I think at the same time, they just went off the fact that, hey, he was the best forward because he was just the best power forward. Who, Carl or Charles? Well, you know, Carl I, I think a lot of people say Carl Malone's the best yeah, I, I do too. I played with Charles, but I just think that – Two trips to the finals put him in a situation mm-hmm. better than Charles. Charles had one with myself, but I, I just think that puts him. And then, you know, being second all time leading the score and all this. And it might have been longevity because of health and it might be longevity because of, you know. Play with John Stockton. Too. Yeah, and playing with John Stockton the whole, you know. His is, whole it, is it weird that in the 90s that we're going to probably, I mean, if we say that obviously Jordan, John Stockton, Cromwell, and then if we can say Scottie Pittman, that it's basically Utah. And the Bulls that run pretty much the 90s, yeah. Like, we forget that, like, there was a couple of teams like the Knicks who competed at a high level every year. Well, in the 90s, they got six championships by the Bulls. And, right. and, and Utah went twice with, with the Michael Jordan era. And then that other fifth position that we all unanimously agree on that went twice was Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah. Which David I Robinson you want to throw in there or because he I, had two trips. I, I would, I would Three go, trips. I would go Akeem because when you look at the dominance part, yeah. And I think when we go back and look at film, every time that they matched up, Hakeem got the best of everybody. Yeah. Uh, although Shaq may have the best case of saying, man, he was dominant. And this is a young Shaq. Shaq came in and was like, okay. But Hakeem, man, like, I think he's probably one of the most vastly underrated, like, players in NBA history. Because we never really mentioned him as far as being one of the greatest. But what he's done, like, defensively, like, that game where he had, like, 10 steals, I think, at 10 blocks in one game. Like, that was against us. You just yeah. had to bring that I think the yeah. I think the players bring up just a bring team up more than anybody time. else. I mean, then, I mean, I think the players that played in that era bring up Akeem more than, like, the analysts do <coughs> because it seems like sometimes they forget that Akeem was so dominant well, at they, the center position. They want to asterisk it yeah. because Mike was out. Right. You know, you know, they're saying Mike would have won eight championships. Don't tell Bernie know. Maxwell that. You know. Bernie mm-hmm. Maxwell is on record of saying uh, we would have beat their ass too. And I think the, the record kind of speaks to us. said the same thing. And I think the record shows that the Houston Rockets, when they did match up versus the Bulls, they dominated the Chicago Bulls in the 90s. Like, they, when they played them in the regular season, Jordan had his worst games because of Bernie Maxwell. Well, look at the, look at the, is the history of Michael's championships. What mm-hmm. center did he have to go through mm-hmm. in the finals? None. You know, it was always a dominant it, power forward. You had Vladi, yeah. Vladi for the Lakers, his first for, one. Rest Kevin and then Duckworth. Uh, yeah. Kevin Duckworth and, and those guys. And then you go through what he went through after that. He went through us. He you goes, know, We had yeah. Mark West and Oliver Miller. And then after coming back, he had to go through. Uh, Sam Perkins. Sam Perkins. Sam played the five. Yeah. Sam played the five in mm-hmm. Seattle. Yeah. And yeah. then also uh, Utah Rick's, had uh, Greg Ostertag. Greg yeah. Ostertag. Yeah. You know? His best center, the best center that he went through was always in the Eastern Conference. And it was always Patrick. Patrick. Or oh, maybe Rick Smith. Smith. Well, or Shaq. Well, oh, well, yeah, but he. No, yeah, she was. That was 45 miles. Yeah, yeah. That was 45 That's true. Well, speaking of all decade teams, um, obviously going to this next decade, we got a guy that. We all kind of agree that if he keeps it up, he's going to be unanimous, and that's going to be Luka Doncic. Yeah. Um, he's obviously back tonight, so um, obviously I don't know the scores right now. I know it was pretty close, but are you guys ready to see, obviously, what Luka can do? Obviously, KP started off pretty strong, but what are you guys' thoughts about Luka coming back and what can he do to help this? Obviously, this team had a couple of hiccups, games they could have won. They lost at the end, but yeah. what can Luka do for this team going forward? For them to make that big strong play. Well, the biggest thing for the Mavericks is uh, where's where's their finisher without when Luca's not on the floor, mm-hmm. and Luca finishes games, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, he's not afraid of the big shot. You know, when Luca was out, the ball, you know, in the close games, the ball would be whipped around, and guys be deciding, should I, should I not shoot this? Mm-hmm. It's not a guy to go, right, I got this, get out the way, let me go ahead and show you. You know what I could do, and that's what Luca does. That's the biggest thing that everybody always talks about. Not only his confidence, but his maturity to recognize that and not be afraid to get on this podium and say uh, it was my fault. I lost the game for us, or that's right. I, this is what I do. I win basketball games. You know, all right, Lane. I got a question for you then. So, with Luca coming back, what does this do with 
KP. So obviously, you know, social media and mm -hmm. the internet has mm -hmm. a way of saying, well, KP's all of a sudden playing better without Luka. So what does that mean? So what do you think about KP going forward? Because now KP has to adjust to going back to being the second guy instead of being the guy. I think, well, I mean, obviously Luka's the leader. He's got to figure out how to get his teammates in great positions to, you know, score the ball, be better. Um, maybe so well, he's not as tired at the end of the the third quarter, fourth quarter going in so he can finish that thing off. I think um, if they can figure out how to gel together, him and Porzingis, where Porzingis takes over, I guess, kind of like what Scotty used to do um, or uh, as far as, you know, scoring and things of that nature. And then Mike took over in the fourth quarter and to be Mike, um, if somehow we can figure out how to do that, I think that that would help the team even more. Uh, Cause I know, um, I mean, Asset um, said that uh, that's something that he would like to see uh, Luca get better at. Is trying to figure out how he can implement KP in his best spots and make him a better player, the All Star that he is. I think both of them. I know, I know the game has changed yeah. so much since then, but I think both of them need to do their research and go back to the, probably the only ball dominant big guy that they that that they had in, in the past, and which is Magic Johnson. You know, even though he had an unbelievable ISO player, obviously Kareem, all-time leading scorer, unbelievable ISO player in James Worthy, unbelievable ISO player in Bob McAdoo, uh, you know, on and on and on. He had players that if you put them on another team, mm -hmm. they are, you know, MVP candidates or, or, you know, up there as the top players. But he got he found a way to make sure that they, they were eaten too. And I, I think that's a big you know, case of it. Obviously, the tempo mm -hmm. is matched because the Lakers went up and down, Mavericks go up and down too. So it's a lot of shots and a lot of opportunities for everybody. But uh, if, he, if they can go back and look at the Magic, how Magic got along with Kareem and, and, and James Worthy and made sure that they got 20, 30, sometimes 40 points in a night where he still can come out with 10 to 25 assists. And, uh, you know, I think that's be effective. See, I think these guys, Aldo won't say he's so much of that guy because of the post work, but they kind of remind me of Bird and McHale. Because remember Lucas, mm -hmm. like, he's kind of the heir apparent. Apparently, you know, people, you can make the comparison between him and Bird, how they play, the certain kind of style, the swag. And then you got Kevin McHale who's more laid back. Chris Stapps more of a laid back guy. Obviously, Chris Stapps doesn't have the post game that Kevin McHale had, but sort of similarities there, which I mean, then you need to start putting, the Mavericks need that Dennis Johnson. They need that kind of guy that can come in and do certain things as well. So we'll see. But speaking of Luca, obviously, um, I guess we can say the All-Star stuff. We can bring it up real quick, I guess. So obviously All-Star voting has started. Mm -hmm. And obviously last year, if you guys remember, Luca was leading the votes until mm -hmm. the last week, mysteriously LeBron James ended up winning the votes for the West. So. Obviously, we all got Lucas Austin, right? Mm -hmm. Austin this year. Uh, what does that say? And I know it's just an All Star game, but I can't think of a guy at age twenty not named LeBron. Maybe Michael Jordan. Well, Jordan was twenty; he was obviously older. But a young guy that was that to the point where he's just like he's the guy. He's getting the most votes. Do you think Luca can be the, the highest vote getter in the NBA? Yeah. I, first, let's go back to the twenty year old. I, I don't think he was twenty, but he he, he accomplished it. Grant Hill. Yeah. Grant Hill was oh, leading okay. vote-getter, and this is with Michael. Yeah. This is in the Michael mm -hmm. era, so just yeah. let you youngsters know how dangerous Grant Hill could have been without the injuries. Uh, I, I just, he, he has a lot more going for him. Uh, he has the international vote. Uh, he's worldwide, mm -hmm. you know. It, you know it, that, I think that's what really – and he's a phenomenon. He's, he's – you know, everybody has been on LeBron and voting for LeBron. Yeah, obviously we're going to vote for LeBron. Uh, honest. But, but, but he's mm – -hmm. He, he's captured this new era, uh, and, and a lot of us uh, really look at LeBron as, as a you know, 15, 16 year veteran as that old era. Even though he's still kicking butt out there, mm -hmm. it's just a new era, and, and Luca has um, you know been upon it, uh, you know, uh, and and I think that's what's really making it roll and what the, the the phenomenon that goes with it. Because even though LeBron does have a worldwide presence. Uh, you you got a lot of overseas and, and Europeans that are going. Hey, let's get a European in there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you see what happened with Giannis last year. Landon, how do you feel about the idea that the NBA could potentially have the two highest vote getters being from Europe, Europe where Giannis takes over the East mm -hmm. and Luca takes over the West? What is your what is your personal opinion about that? Because we we always said it was an international game. We kept saying it with Dirk. We said it probably back in the nineties, obviously with Drazen, and you know we always wanted Sabonis to come out when he was younger. There was guys came out, Sabonis, Marshall, and this. You name. It. We kept saying, "Who coach?" These guys is becoming an international game. But now we're at the point now where 
not only is it changing the, the landscape, but these are our most popular players, mm -hmm. as it seems. So what do you think about that? I think it's shown how, you know, the, 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 the league has grown since, you know, the 90s, since they went over there with Team USA um, in 1992. Um, David Stern always wanted to be, have the game global, and he's done that. You know, we hope he gets well. Um, here soon because we know he's in the hospital, but um, his vision is starting to come uh, to fruition. Yeah, because it's not a Yao Ming situation yeah. because Yao Ming got a lot of votes because it was just Yao Ming. But we're talking about these dudes are like actually balling. And Yao Ming was balling, but mm -hmm. it went to the point where we were like, yeah, Yao's going to win another MVP or Luka can actually win MVP. So back on Luka, and I know this is important to say because obviously if you look down, it says feet. He's rocking heat, of course. <laughs> so, said, man, let me ask you a question. Luca's actually the first Jordan Brand member to be a Euro, like a true Euro that's going to be a pretty much a landmark for Jordan Brand. What do you think about that? Um, I, I don't know if, if he's the first, because I think they signed the, the China guy. I'm not really sure if they did. The, 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 they drafted him this year or last year. Uh, Are you talking about from Washington? Uh, oh, Rui, yeah. Rui, Rui. Yeah, so Rui was a true first in that, but yeah. far as like making like – I think, like, when you think about, like, headline, like, Melo and yeah. CP3. Yeah. Like, they're the headline guys, whereas, yeah. like, a guy like Michael Finley was just a part of Jordan Brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Been, but now we're talking to Luca as a marketing. What do you think, how does it, because obviously you came in the generation that was, like, that was the thing. Yeah. In order to get the player's name out there, we had the Grandma Malls. Nobody knew about Grandma Malls until the Converse commercial. Nobody, honestly, Michael Jordan's game spoke for itself, but what really made Michael Jordan great was the fact that if you put on the shoes, you believe you could do more so. You came in that generation. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what that does to Luca's impact on that end? Well, it's huge, and it's not as big as as, as obviously Michael Jordan no. uh, and, and 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 Penny and, and mm -hmm. Shaquille and Neil and the rest of those guys who came out with shoes uh, because they, you know, I, I, they didn't come in as his own brand. Like what Michael Jordan has done is just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, not not the fact that he hadn't played in so many years, but the fact that he's still the number one selling basketball shoe, yeah. uh, and 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 sports apparel out there is bananas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it just continues to keep going. And, uh, he just uh, he was the first uh, sneaker company to, to, to his quarter to go a billion yeah. at the quarter mark to go a billion. Like that's unbelievable. But I think I think with Luca. Uh, just joining that company helps not only the European style of uh, because I mean we got to go to that European swag it, it, it ain't it ain't it, it can't compete to ours mm -hmm. no. and and they're trying to get on it and I think the wonderful thing about Luca is that he walks he, he walks like a ball player like mm -hmm. Jay Z said you know what I'm saying like he has that whole demeanor about him uh, which you know the Ginobili's and 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 the Dirks and, and all the rest of the guys who came in from Europe Europe uh, they didn't have that you know mm -hmm. they just you know. Uh, and I think that's what the, the, the game has evolved to uh, because, you know, after Dream Team won, well, excuse me, only one Dream Team. Mm -hmm. uh, I disagree with that. After Dream Team, that's the only Dream Team there was. You sure? Then you got, you got guys coming in, learning how to play the game. And now you got a kid like Luca coming in, learning how to play the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and he plays it to a high standard. When I was here, when Dirk came in, I, I used to tell all my young fellas when they came in the league, "Hey, you gotta, you you, you gotta eliminate the I don't wanna and 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 the posse and that whole nine and and I'm tired and I don't want. We gotta practice again and how many more photos and how many more signatures gotta do? You gotta eliminate that mm -hmm. because a guy like Dirk came in and I watched him uh, practice just as hard as me, a veteran." and not complain and when they brought him back in for another workout and they said you got to work on this and and then we have to go play against hall of famers like carl malone mm -hmm. and barkley and, and tim duncan like that and he would be exhausted but he you know he never complained he never said nothing so i'm saying these europeans are gonna take your jobs mm -hmm. because they don't have there, there there hasn't been one european that had an argument or, or disagreement with a head coach with his contract mm -hmm. or with the organization it has not been one Right. So if you come in here thinking that you're going to be the knucklehead and you're going to make your way that way, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And it has changed the way basketball is treated because – and Luca gets it, yeah. you know. I mean, look at it. He's mm -hmm. a superstar and he signs before. 
he signs afterwards. He, he comes by the, the front office and signs mm -hmm. on it and makes these, you know, all this appearances and stuff. So, you know, that's unheard of in the superstar in this age. And the, and the only time that he acted out um, about, that showed some emotion that might have gone the wrong way, you talked to him about it. Um, Could you tell us the story about the shot that Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, Jr. took mm -hmm. and you pulled him aside and said, young fella, you want people to come play with you. Yeah. You don't want to be the guy that actually is the reason why people are not coming to play with you because yeah. of your attitude, especially because, at your young age. Well, because of the dollar amount is yeah. so large and, and you want to come somewhere where you're going to make 60 to $100 million and be happy. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, I grew up in an era where coaches just barked at you and barked at you. And, and some players need that. Mm -hmm. But when you have your player, your, 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 probably your leader or, or your counterpart barking at you, it's, it's real difficult. And, and he understands yeah. that early. And he, and he got it as soon as I talked to him about it. And he, and he knows that camera is always mm -hmm. on him and how affected that he can make his player, his, his teammate, mm -hmm. by him making a facial. He, he understood it real. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say it's just, you know, Kobe came in this league my, his rookie year with me. and. The phenomenon of why he played, great. The dunks, the crossovers, the spectacular plays. Um, the biggest thing is just this, his maturity was just, my God, this is a 19, 18, 19 year old kid, just so mature, you know, knew what he had to be, how he, where he had to be, you know, he didn't have somebody tagging him along and make sure, hey, young fella, go here, go there. He did what he's supposed to do, spoke correctly, said the right things, bridged the gap between the old guys and the young guys, and. Uh, you know, as much as everybody wants to say about, oh man, this, that, and the other about Kobe, that's one of the things he you know, He conducted himself like a true professional from day one to day 21. But do you feel like that's a deal where I think the AU thing and also, mm -hmm. look, we're all creatures of the, you know, the, the habit of watching mm -hmm. the high school mixtapes. A lot of guys get famous before they even touch the NBA. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like Luca, he played against grown men his whole life, basically, he said, his teenage life. So he had to learn the hard way. He was coached hard. I think there's a video that's online. You can look it up. Luca was crying when his coach was yelling at him on the, side, on the bench. And, like, he already had been through that. Kobe, he had his dad, you know, Joe Bryant. And, yeah, but uh, both of them came from the. European era. And I was going to ask you, you about know, that. And, and that's so crazy because when I played over there, a couple of games that I played overseas, we always had a 14 or 15 year old kid on our team. And I was shocked the first time. I was like, well, what do you guys do? You go to school? No, we don't go to school. This is what we play. And a lot of people threw a lot of darts at um, Mark Cuban, mm -hmm. owner of the Mavericks, because he said that Americans need to go overseas a couple years and learn how to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And this is what they meant. Mm -hmm. it, this is exactly what they meant. They I mean, they started at such a young age. Look, and look, when he's coming here, he's so mature. Kobe, young age coming in, so mature. The Ginobili's, mm -hmm. you know, coming over here, so mature. And that's why you don't have these problems. And, and unfortunately for that situation where Luca was crying, it, it's, it's just a little baby boy, you know, being chastised by a man, which is sometimes if you do it on normally on the street, it's a bad thing, you yeah. know, if you see a grown man yelling at a little teenager, you're like, wait, what are you doing? But in that coaching situation, you know, you have to put the, your big boy pants on and say, hey, hey, this is what I signed up to do. Let's get it. All right, so I guess then the final thing would be this. So Hall of Fame is getting introduced. Uh, mm -hmm. We get a lot of inductees or potential inductees. And uh, I'll name a couple of names and I'll go through the list. But um, obviously Chris Bosch, who you mm -hmm. mentioned, possibly being on the All-Decade team. Richard Hamilton was here tonight, mm -hmm. um, and also Chris Webber's here tonight. Chris Webber's tonight. Um, he didn't get in last year. No. Um, we got obviously some no burners. Which who are the no burners? Tim Duncan, Kobe, yeah, Kobe. Kobe, Chris Bosh. Is people are saying it's it's, it's unanimous that he's going to get in. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Uh, uh, Sean Marion. Sean Marion. Michael, Michael Finley. Finley is so, here too. So so what do you feel? So the thing is this. Because I don't understand the criteria. We in every sport, there's an issue with the Hall of Fame because we don't know the criteria. Is it winning or is it individual? Because my thing is this: while Chris Webber may not have the resume of a winner per se, because he didn't win a championship, when you look at basketball history, Sacramento, the Fab Five, because the NBA, the, mm -hmm. it's not the NBA Hall of Fame; it's the Basketball Hall of Fame. Chris Webber has some sort of staple somewhere. He had an all-star career, five, six-time all-star. Mm -hmm. There's guys that made the all-star team three times. They didn't even have no championships They're in the Hall of Fame. So my thing is, do you think that, like, because now it's going to become harder now because these guys that are coming in now have numbers. 
What do you think about like Chris Bosh? Because it's interesting with Chris Bosh because he has everything that you kind of want. Like you say, hey, he got the rings. Mm -hmm. He had the numbers prior to getting to Miami. But people look at what his career was long ago. He's got 11 all-star appearances. And not all of them were just fan votes either. Okay. Yeah, and and then you go, you, you, you not only add the rings and it, the rings that he's he's gotten, he's the third party of that. You know, he's the third yeah. Superman in that in that you know Marvel Comics whatever. Uh, he he held it on by himself. Now, if he's not a first time ballot, you know, then you have to eliminate James Worthy mm -hmm. because well, James was the third on on a, on, a, on the team with Magic and Kareem and. But he got in the first time. He's an MVP of a finals. But this is a, this is what I'm yeah. saying. It, 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 it's I think I think, and it's also about timing. Mm -hmm. And it's also a boys' club that certain boys don't think this way towards the other. They they frowned upon maybe the Michigan thing that mm -hmm. Chris did. Mm -hmm. You know, they frowned upon certain things, and that'll keep you out for mm -hmm. a long time, a la Spencer Haywood or What's, Tim Hardaway Sr. for what he his comments he made. Um, in regarding gender and things of that nature. Yeah, that might, those see, things might See, my thing is this. I know people get mad at me when I do this because I pick one player every time about this offense, and that's Reggie Miller. While Reggie did have a great career, I never get that backwards. I look at Reggie Miller as this. He didn't win anything. When we look at Reggie Miller's defining moments, it came from one thing, the Knicks. Whatever he did against the Knicks is more popularized than the fact that he never won a championship behind that. Well, that's, and, that's the mecca. And my thing is this. If you pull up his career numbers outside of the making the three pointers, he's an 18 3 and 3 guy. That's his numbers. He was never a guy that would, he could get you 25 and never got over there, which is no problem. I don't have a problem with the points, but he never was a high assist and a high rate, which I don't look at that either. His impact on the game was a little bit bigger than that. But when I look at his numbers, I can say, hey, here's his resume. He never made a second or first All NBA team. He's a five-time All-Star. He played so, in the Michael Aaron. That's why I said it's all Aaron. about well, the timing. Thing, okay, so it's I all about it. the timing, and it's also what, what feathers did Reggie Miller ruffle? It's politics, too. It's no, political. He you know what didn't. What but my thing is this. Even playing in the Jordan era, Mitch Richmond is, is a Hall of Famer. Championship. Yeah, but, you know. But then he, then he also moved. He moved to the West. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's the Western. It's different with if, if you're playing in the same conference as Michael Jordan okay. and he's going. It's like I, I, some players it's only like got LeBron. two. It's like LeBron. It's like some players only got two all-star appearances, but they're Hall of Famers because they played behind Mike. They played in the two spot mm -hmm. behind Mike. They're never going to get that opportunity, you know. And Joe Dumars and all those guys were playing well, and you couldn't get it. Well, I'll give you a better example then. Ray Allen. He played behind Kobe. Trace McGrady. Vince Carter. While Ray Allen was consistently good, he was kind of like the Reggie Miller of our generation because he wasn't the guy that you would say is a starter. In the, championship. the two championships. Yeah, the championship, right? Championship. I mean, the championships, and plus he had to probably one of the greatest shots ever. Mm -hmm. if I, but, I mean, when you look at these, like, these Hall of Fame things, my thing is this. We just need consistency. Because my thing is this. While I get the ruffle and the feathers things with Chris Webber may play a case in that, Man, we got to get out of that stage of, well, I don't like him because of, because when you think, my, my thing is the Hall of Fame is history of basketball. And I think a lot of guys, I think we shouldn't look at number, I think impact. Like a lot of guys impacted the game a certain kind of way. Like that's why Reggie is in the Hall of Fame. I don't think they said Reggie was like, hey, man, he's probably one of the five greatest shooting. We can name about six or seven shooting guys that we can say are better than Reggie. The thing that Reggie did was while Jordan was there and when he wasn't there, there was another guy out there in the East that had some memorable moments. And we're going to we're gonna give him that. But then I look at a guy like, you know, Sean Marion, who has everything that you want in a basketball player, selfless, team guy, won a championship, defended. Six-time All-Star, defensive player stuff. Yet he's going to get bypassed because of the fact that maybe when we looked at his generation, well, damn man, we got Le the LeBrons, the guys of that nature. No, well he's going to look get, get look it. by because of the people he's coming in he with. Went. You know, you got you also got Swin Cash, and you also mm -hmm. got Tamika mm -hmm. Catchings. You well, got sir. you know what I'm saying you you got and then we didn't even see the ones the writers and the yeah. and, and the coaches. We haven't even seen that Mark side. Albert, the, is, yeah. you, know, you know, we haven't even seen that side who gets in, and that's the tough part about it. And, and I said that it's about the timing because in. For I think it was 20, 30, I don't know how many years, Spencer Haywood was not in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And the dude, dude was unbelievable. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 first of all, he broke down so many bears. Yeah. Everybody who's signed these free agent contracts, make sure you send some to Spencer Haywood. He has a famous Nike him. Nike Most story. of you guys who come hardship, make sure you send him some stuff. You know, it's just it, all these things come through. And not only that, he was dangerous in the ABA. He was dangerous in the NBA. He was dangerous in any opportunity he had to play. So, 
you know, Olympian, mm -hmm. on and on and on. So, Why shouldn't he have got yeah, in? And, and this little clash between... The, the, the case between him, David, and all this, that's why he didn't get in. But and it's just, it's just timing. Look, Charlie Scott. Mm -hmm. Mark Aguirre. Mark Aguirre. Dude, dude, um, dude from Oklahoma. Um, uh, Maurice Sheets. Maurice Sheets. Maurice Sheets. Sheets. But you got, you got like guys like that because then it's like they get forgotten. They almost get – we go through a stage where we say every year, yeah, he's going to probably get in, and then all of a sudden he's not in. And then we forget that he was even there. So Bobby Jones last year. And I'm surprised yeah, just, Lauren Jackson wasn't on the, um, the ballot this year. Yeah. And she has a resume. She, has, she a, has a resume for yeah. it. But my thing is, like, on the Hall of Fame, it's always been one thing. It's just that there has to be consistency. Like, there, no sport is ever consistent on Hall of Fame where it's baseball, where we don't know what a Hall of Fame is in baseball because, like he said, there's politics. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is this, once that older generation of voters gets out, then we start getting the young guys. And I think it should be a criteria on that. I think that while I get it, the older guys do have to vote, I think that shouldn't be swayed as much because – Older guys sometimes are, you know, they'll tell you, well, Chris Bosh, hey, he could play in my era. I'm not going to vote for him. Yeah. And I think that, unfortunately, it's one of those things. And then it's also marketing. They're building a new facility, yeah. a new opportunity for not only uh, the, the people that are 50 and 60, 70 years old. They're not really going to be going. They're going to be bringing their grandbabies there mm -hmm. to be the youngsters that they need to go in there and see Chris Bosh and somebody that they, they can recognize, Dirk and all these guys. And sometimes, you know, they get pushed by the wayside. If they, you know, Bobby Jones mm -hmm. and people who had played in the 70s and 80s and 60s and stuff like that, that they don't even, you know, consider in because of the, you know, we need to sell tickets. We need to get mm -hmm. bodies in in, uh, in this Naismith Hall of Fame. All right, last thing. So I'm going to name five names of current players. And we're going to set their current. Are they going to be first ballot Hall of Famers? Because there will be Hall of Famers, I think, eventually, but first ballot. Dwight Allen. Yes. Don't doubt. Okay, Dwight Allen was easy. Okay, that's just it. And I'm also going to throw an asterisk to it. That's if they quit today. Yes. That would be, be the asterisk. Yeah. R Russell Westbrook. Yes. Yes. Hmm. MVP. Okay, MVP helps him. MVP. Okay, I mean, I mean, you take the MVP away. Triple I still double, think he the triple doubles and stuff. But he's yeah. in there. He's in there. Yeah. Clay Thompson. Yes, the championships. Championships, championships, consistency. Uh, Andre Iguodala. Okay, so I'm, line. so I'm gonna go, so let's go back to this 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 thing in the game of team basketball. He has a gold medal. Yes. He has college accolades. He has an NBA championship and a Finals MVP, and he's a multi-time All Star. How does that work? It the depends time, on what year. It's the timing. He's got it's a first the timing of who he goes into. Yeah. If he goes in with this crew that's coming up right now, he may not get in. And Sean Marion's not going to get in this year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being honest. He's yeah, not going to get in. He's not going to get in this yeah, year. Yeah, like guys like him, Michael Finley, they're going to be guys that maybe one day when they're like older, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? No, just win the time. Yeah, the time. Chauncey will be in, but he's yeah. not going to get in this the year. Chauncey Billis. I mean, it's just yeah. like, you know, these guys that have they play, they, their jerseys retired mm -hmm. in, in, in their prospective arenas and, and, and not in the Hall of Fame. It's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. All right, well. Because not all those guys are going to get over Tim Duck and Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett. Yeah. I mean, Chris I, play, I play with Kevin Johnson, you know, hasn't hasn't yeah. got a nod. Dan Marley, you know, I don't think he's in either. Dan Marley hasn't got a nod. Star. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, it just, Sean Kemp is not a Hall of Famer. Sean Kemp. I, think he, not, I don't think he played long enough. Larry Johnson? Well, he played long enough. Yeah, and Larry Johnson. Larry, Larry Johnson has the college resume and the NBA yeah. resume. Larry no. no, Larry's not in. Larry's not a Hall of Famer. Yeah, so yeah it's, Larry, it's, Larry, it's, it's, like said, said, it's timing. It's timing. And I also think that, like, a lot of times now, it's just a stricter. Because the problem is this, the guys have the numbers now. So then you got to start breaking down, well, what did he do with that? Or, like, like for instance, Melo's going to be one that's going to be, although we all think he's first ballot, somebody's going to say, well, he ain't win nothing. Because you know he's going to get compared to? LeBron. Unfortunately, he was in the LeBron. He's LeBron's press. So they're going to say, well, look at LeBron, then look at him. Okay, well, then look at KD and look at Melo. So then you get started looking at guys next to him. He doesn't have the resume. I think if Melo can play out with Portland and people can see that he's he, he's changed and then he'll go get a championship somewhere, just we won't be having this conversation. I don't, hmm. think, I don't think Melo has changed. I think he still continues to do what he does, but – it's just in a it's just in a different light. Yeah. You know, well, I don't I mean, know if he's like been humbled. I don't think he's about. been humbled. I don't think he's been tamed. I just think that it's just a different light. And, and uh, you know, it's that the the Nick era was a bad era. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just had bad. He was a good player on very bad teams in New York City, and uh, all the blame was just on his feet. All right. So real quick, just like a couple of coaches I'm gonna bring. Obviously, we all agree unanimous will be Greg Popovich. 
Yes. He may go down regarded as the greatest coach by NBA history. Got too many, so he won't count. But a couple of interesting names. Rick Carlisle. The championship. Well, tough. well. Um, Rudy tough. Tom. So Rudy Tom Jonovich has two. He should he should get in yeah. eventually. Rudy yeah, should well, get in. Well, he's talking about first ballot, right? First yeah. ballot. He's talking about first ballot. So is Rick Carlisle Rick, Rick Carlisle's first ballot? I don't think Rick Carlisle's first. Ballot. So I got an interesting one that could be first ballot. Eric Spoelstra. He has two championships. Mm. All right. His resume. He's, his resume. So his, his span. Mm -hmm. I got to enter. But we we got so got to go basketball. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. before he coached, where's his basketball? So then that makes an interesting statement there for the last He's a video person. guy. Yeah. So then we got an interesting statement for the last guy, Steve Kerr. Okay. Steve Kerr has six NBA. Oh, is it five? Six. Five championships. Five championships, yeah. and he has three as a coach. The Steve three. Kerr is Steve Kerr a, a Hall of Famer? Does first ballot. Uh, for for coach, yes. As a player, no. Well, he'll probably get in just off his. Well, I don't know if they do they well, separate. Because he 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 was executive of the year, if I'm not mistaken, right when he was with Phoenix. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, his player accolades. He was a he was a role player, but his coaching is probably going to get him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, so he it's with with. Without a doubt, because it, you yeah. know it, it, we we all have the argument about best player in the world. And they always leave out Bill Russell, who has the most championships. Mm -hmm. See, that's my and thing. the same thing. Uh, I mean, the best winner, yeah, Bill Russell. He only mm -hmm. lost once. Uh, you know, Robert Ory. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he has seven championships. And the reason why I bring that and, up, and, and contributing championships, <laughs> not you know, not sitting on the not bench. Steve Kerr championships, where you know, one of them was if he, he was yeah. effective. The yeah. rest of them, you know, he's. And the reason why I bring those coaches up because there's a couple of coaches I think that are eligible this year. George Carl being one who hasn't won a championship, but he has all the wins. Donnie Nelson, oh Don Nelson, I'm sorry, who isn't, mm -hmm. a, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer either. No. But guess what, he has player championship with Boston, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Get, and like then he has the most wins, I think, or one of the, he's one of the top, and also, I mean, when do we do that? Because then he doesn't have the championships, but guess what, he won a lot of basketball games as coach. I would, t well, if preference, if I was a voter, I would take Donnie over. Carl, because oh, yeah, all, Don, Don, all yeah, the all Don, the Don. drama that's circulating with his name, with players and things of that nature. But then again, that's a political side of thing of why he wouldn't get in there at times. But Don so. Nelson kind of innovated the small, the stretch, the stretch five, and he probably won't get in the Hall of Fame because he didn't win anything. And everybody always thinks that Big Donnie did that in Golden State. No, he, he had did to go he, back in Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah. Milwaukee is when yeah. he did that. Terry Cummings, you know Terry Cummings, Sidney Moncrie team. Sidney yeah. Moncrie team, that Marcus Johnson, all yeah. those guys, uh, Paul P uh, uh, Paul Pressey and the all true, those guys. Yeah. Paul Pressey, I, you know what, just for all basketball fans, let's make this clear. I know people bring up Scottie Pippen as being the point forward, but before Scottie Pippen, there was a guy named Paul Pressey. Who could um brought it. he was six seven bring the ball to court too so a lot he a lot of history. like Scotty but yeah he, he, yeah, he a lot, can handle the point position a lot of history so yeah. man I appreciate you guys um I think we got an interesting discussion on that um we'll bring out more but I got definitely got some good questions for said next time because it's a rough for his fellas because yeah man we got it that's a that dream team deal is uh we're gonna talk about that because the '96 team is better than '92. Uh, Christian Leitner may get in the Hall of Fame one day. Every member on that team going to the Hall of Fame. 96 don't have everybody in the Hall of Fame just about. Huh? 96 have everybody. Who's on that team? Larry Johnson, he's probably going to get into the we'll Hall see of you Fame. Next, we'll see y'all next week when we talk about Sha that. Shaq's in there. Hakeem. They had Hakeem and Shaq on one team. So, They're in the Hall of Fame, They had though. Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan and Larry Bird on one team. Should, should I keep going? Hold on. Thank you. I appreciate you coming out. <laughs> I appreciate you coming out. Mama. I'll see you later, Mom. If they put Matt, if they, I dare. for another show. <laughs> yeah, we're going to say that. Now, if they match up 92 versus 90 in that year, those years, 96 will run past the dream team so bad. Who's guarding Shaq in 96?